When God created the human body, He used mathematics. He what? While I was on one of the trips, I was out of town earlier this year. And on one of the days, I had many interactions with the Lord, but this was very vivid because whew, imagine you wake up and then you just see somebody standing in midair, not touching the ground, just casually starting to talk to you. Not even, hello, hi, I'm an angel from the Lord, just starts talking to you. It's frightening, especially if it's 4 a.m. So he said, Daniel, is zero a number? I said, yes. What is the value of zero? I said, nothing. He said, what is the value of zero? I said, nothing. He looked at me. What is one plus one? <laughs> Two. He said to me, what is one plus zero? I said, one. He said, I want to show you the maths of heaven. I've been waiting all this time. I finally got permission to show you. I want to show you why it's very important that you must have a zero in your life. Are you ready to see this? Now, if you go back to school, if you are concentrating and not looking at the goal in front, you will see that you had a number line. Everything begins with zero. Are we together? That way is infinity. That way is infinity. And then you must consider the X, Y graph. Remember the four gradients? One day your life will go into negative infinity, but it's still numbers. <laughs> so this way I go one, this way I go two, this way I go three. Pasadi, can you get a massive calculator just ready? I'm gonna show them the maths just now. Three and then four and then five. But on this side, this side we don't know. This side we don't know, but the bank knows. The bank will tell you, you have minus three rand. One of the sisters was sharing a testimony. She was in the minus. That's what qualified her to get the miracle. Miracles aren't for people who've got it all together. There is qualification criteria for you to get some special treatment from God. You start from one. When you're born, if you go and check the nappies, I think there's a sister that we're gonna pray for today that's turned 16. She's asked for prayer. Instead of having a birthday party, she's asked for prayer in church. We'll pray for it just now. You start from zero months. How can somebody be zero and still be living? For a long time you were zero. You released yourself into zero. Your mother would tell you. If zero is nothing, then why are we using it to measure the size of a nappy? It's a size. It means it has value. So when you have nothing, you still have value. If I go to this side, to negative infinity, I get negative one, negative two, negative three. If you travel overseas and you go to these bigger shopping malls, they have negative, they have ground zero. And then after that, they have minus one, minus two. We have weather. In weather, you get one degree, very cold. Oh, that is super cold. 
you get minus five degrees. If it didn't exist, we would not experience that temperature. It exists, but it's uncomfortable. God needs you to be at minus five sometimes because at minus five, something is activated. Some volatile kuta like, like nitrogen. When you carry nitrogen, you need to keep it below a certain temperature. You can't handle nitrogen. Just anyhow. Because the moment nitrogen goes to room temperature, it becomes a problem. Some of you want to be like the rest of the room and God's keeping you at a lower temperature to the rest of the room because he knows what is inside you is designed to thrive under those conditions. You go to the North Pole, there are animals living in ice. But the world tells us they are the strongest. They can survive anything. But a little bit of chill. <laughs> if God just turns down the temperature sometime in your life, <laughs> Jesus, please. No, he knows what he's doing. There are demons that cannot survive that temperature. But he knows you can survive. He made you that way. I told you last week, the moment you die, the demon says, I don't want you anymore. He jumps out. So what is it about death that makes a demon check out? No deliverance. Because you go to zero. Satan hates this number. Because zero represents infinity. There's a scripture in the Bible that says one will become a thousand. How does one become a thousand? Pastor D, can you say one divided by naught point one? Don't create, don't press equals yet. What do you think the answer is going to be? Notice I said zero point one. It's not yet one. We are still dealing with the numbers in between one and zero. We, we are here. Hey, there are people who have not been in between here. Answer? I take one. I divide it by zero point one. I get 10. So what is five plus five? So it means there are many ways to 10. There are in between ways to 10. Your neighbor was five plus five equals 10. You also want five plus five equals 10. No, you, he's gonna take one divided by nothing and a little one and give you 10. So that when he's doing it, the demons in the neighborhood don't see because five plus five is a big number. It is positive infinity. This is announced to the whole world. But with Christians, the Bible says, you died and your life is hidden in Christ. It's hidden in eternity. There is no way you can expect your whole life to be figured out. Some of you are starting to not like me and you've stopped coming to church because you thought if you and I have a conversation, you're gonna figure out everything for your life. Sweetheart, your life is a mystery. Your life is a mystery. There's a book about your life that nobody is permitted to just open unless they have full authorization from the Holy Spirit. There are things about you that will blow you away. There are things about you, it requires seals to break. Don't ever think a man or woman of God will tell you everything about your life. Don't make that mistake. You will go to prophet so-and-so, he will assist you up until there. Then you must go to another one. Then you must walk alone for a while.
if you have answers to everything in your life you're not human scientists cannot even explain how at 6 months in the womb in the womb 6 months a blade appears and neatly cuts the eyelids and disappears again a blade appears in the stomach of a woman in the uterus a blade appears oh, we have some guests that they've traveled 3 or 4 hours clap hands for jesus I don't know if I've forgotten it. From Kings, Mama Vina. Are you, are you from Kings? Where? King Williamstown. To be in the service. Oh, give God Jesus. Uh. It's no way you can, you can come that far and Jesus just look at you. Pastor D, type in one divided by not point not not one I came to tell you there's another way God's going to do it Ah You're not hearing me God's got a thousand ways to divide and multiply your life, but he doesn't always multiply. Sometimes he divides. He says unless a grain falls into the ground and dies, the actual process the the, the grain multiplies into several heads. Death is actually multiplication. That's why the cross when Jesus carried it was an X sign. When he carried it on his shoulder it was an X. When he was on it he was adding you to the kingdom. One becomes a thousand but we need zeros. According to computers I stand to be corrected. Zero equals 2. Your computer that is way smarter than you and faster than you when it sees zero it sees two. Ah. Pasadi when it sees zero it sees two. When it sees zero it sees two. When it sees zero it sees two. Many times God will bring you to zero because he's beginning again. This is how he confuses the enemy. He brings you to negative 4. It's still infinity, sweetheart. It gets more complicated. I'm not an academic. I don't have a degree. This is a conversation with an angel. I was lower grade maths when I matriculated. All through high school and I held on to standard grade. I held on to dear standard grade. My teacher actually in front of me Daniel is because there was a couple of Daniels. So I was when they said Daniel is everybody hates that little black boy. Daniel is I'm saying in front of your friend. She was she was a nice Afrikaner woman, you know. She had a very nice voice. Daniel, this is not where you belong, eh? I I keep giving you bad marks. You must go to lower grade, my baby. No, the Afrikaner aunties have a nice way of telling you that you're dumb. <laughs> she had said, "Listen, she was telling me so, nah, but I knew. It's get out of here." I held on because to me some of you are trying to look like something you're not. Some of you are not there yet. You're going to get there but you're not there yet. So why the pressure? I I when when <laughs> when, when when they did my marks, I got my matric certificate. 
Barely. I, I think I closed the door for the grade. I'm telling you. You see it? I believe I closed the door. Because everybody was, you know, when you get your matric certificate from Malusi board and they give you an asterisk. Where's the matric certificates here? When you see this thing, you must read the comments below. Effected to, to, to change marks. In other words, they, they, they took my matric certificate and they gave it a shake. You didn't get your matric certificate last year. Let me explain something. I went to UNISA. Directly after that, went to UNISA. They said to me, no, you can't study your matric certificate, even though they shook it. It shooketh not. It's not enough shake. In other words, it's supposed to be pressed down. I was rejected, go. So I went to work. I went and did a small, short course. Then I was employed. I became a lecturer for computer literacy in West Street in Durban. Out of school, earning a salary, three, four times what my friends were earning when they actually matriculated with distinctions. I gotta I got share this. There was a guy in my, my electronics engineering class. I, I, I was number 25 in electronics class. The electronics register was 25 people. <laughs> so him, my brother, Pastor Timothy, and another guy, they used to tease me because my marks were putrid. There was a guy who would say to me, your marks are putrid disgusting. Putrid marks. Eventually, they told me I must get out of electronics engineering. So I passed with a very weak. You understand? I'm talking to somebody here because you think it's the end of the world. Keep listening. So there was a guy. Now, he was the most excellent guy. He was a bit this side, but he was excellent, you know? He said, Daniel, you, you, I don't think you're even going to get a job in life. Because you're always flunking your, your, your mats and you're just, you're just, you're not working. So I was not working. They, they, my nickname was not working. When I entered, they'll say not working. They had a song for me. Is there anybody here where they had a song for you? They had a song for Daniel S. Fast forward, six months later after matriculation. I'm sitting in an office conducting interviews. Guess who came looking for a job? <laughs> he walked in. I said, have a seat. What can I do for you? I said, are you working currently? He said, I said, no, not working. <laughs> God knows your timing. And I, I, I burst in the adulation and said, you're done. I left that college because it was time. You see, God first embarrassed me at UNISA because he was going to give me glory at UNISA. I, I want you to listen. I'm talking about UNISA, the University of South Africa. I want you to listen. And believe it or not, I'm talking about the body. Your body is destined to stand somewhere great. Physically. But it must first go a process. There must first be a process. Went back, reapplied. He said, we are aware of your application. We told you you have been denied. Another professor walks in and says, no, 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 no. He can do this bridging course. If he doesn't pass, we don't want to talk to him again. I still remember my student number, 432239-1-5. Guess what happened? Bridging course, 70% financial accounting, 30% higher grade mathematics. 
and then a little bit of economics and a spray of life orientation just a small stuff i said eh. <laughs> bridging course Is, am i bridging or i'm free falling it felt like a diving course guess what i said god i'm going to fail he said no you're not i studied every day for 3 hours with another lady every day and it wasn't going in she was going on and on and i have a headache i'm like yo i can't wait for it to finish we wrote our exam i got to share this before the exam i was sitting in the class 200 students big class let's understand durban unisa is regional office it's massive the professor walks in and he takes the pen and he says in financial accounting what forms part of the fundamental principles of financial accounting is an equation that says assets equals equity plus liabilities now i want you guys to find out what is the formula for liabilities all of a sudden while i'm sitting there chatting to friend making noise the temperature changed i looked at the board and remembered that we had certain laws in mathematics and one is to make l the subject of formula so i made l the subject of formula and i found the answer then i made e the subject of formula which is your equity and i found the answer i'm scribbling on my paper professor walks past stops at my paper i said oh here we go he grabs it he says how on earth did you do this i said no i made l the subject of formula he said meaning liabilities i said both both limited liability and long term liabilities i made it the subject of formula where did you learn that so i made like <laughs> you'd think that's enough then he took my piece of paper and went to the board i said i've met a very remarkable young man professor i think i should give you these equations all of a sudden 200 people looked at my desk and then looked at the professor the professor began to endorse me it's like i was getting a phd and all of a sudden round of applause <laughs> after class i was bombarded by all the people in the class they wanted me to form a study group i said no god's glory had begun god's mathematics began wrote my exam it was a 3 hour paper when i went home i said i definitely failed that angel woke me up he said you didn't fail i marked your paper i saw is that 53% ah thank you because to pass in unisa you need 53% at that time you must be above 50% to pass if you get about 40 you can do a supplementary exam i said an angel marking my paper i must be hallucinating i said this is hallucination how can an angel mark my paper for what the results came out now you're supposed to pick up the phone and dial student number 4322391 pass with distinction 93% wait i said nee my bro typed it this time i typed it at normal speed 4322391 should it number 4322391 passed with distinction 93% i left the phone stood <laughs> grabbed it again 4322 you see when you when, when god does his maths you won't believe it you you dial that number slowly you keep checking that account you keep refreshing your app because you can't believe that sum just entered because it came from negative infinity and it became a thousand it doesn't make sense god's mathematics doesn't make 
sense, but it made the universe. I went on to teach financial accounting, which is predominantly and fundamentally mathematics to an extent, both in exponential value, distributive law, and associative law. For six years, I taught people, year one, year two, year three, year four. UNISA gave me an award in first year. God was doing his maths. So where are you now? If you want to enjoy your walk with Jesus, I want to give you number one tip. You can put Romans 6 up on the board. Number one tip. Are you listening to me? All right, we're done with the maths lesson. You have now graduated. Hallelujah. Oh, it's been a while since I rubbed out a board. Taught, at financial, taught financial accounting to law practitioners, financial accounting for non-users, financial accounting for the gen, generally accepted accounting practice, and I came up with a module that was endorsed by one or two financial accountants. And because of that, somebody called me. She needed a petroleum license. She invested 20 million rand into opening an oil refinery company along with others. I was the one that did the cash flow statement. The Department of Energy said, who did your paper? She said, you don't want to know. When God starts doing his maths, he's going to blow you away. Here is the key I want to give you. Turn to your neighbor and say, be still. Be still. Be still, Caroline. Master the skill. Learn to listen. It's a skill. We can't tell you anything that would change your life if you don't listen. Generally, you think you should be doing the talking. Generally, you believe you have something to say your opinion is more important. Teach yourself to listen. 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 is silent. When you listen, God will give you mysteries. When you read the Bible, listen. When somebody is talking to you, listen. Be attentive. Train yourself. Tell yourself, hold up. Hold them on. Listen. The people that are talking inside say, hey, shh, I'm busy. Listen. I've interacted with a lot of you. That is your problem. You believe that I must get a full, lengthy idea of what you've been through in order to help you. I want to tell you what God is saying. Oh, okay, j j just, just a minute, prophet. Hold on, hold on. And then, and then... The one who is the helper has full knowledge already. You're not going to get any better because prophet has full knowledge. I have PhD in some of your dreams. Me, I have PhD. You have given me textbooks. And you feel that is what you need to do. And if I don't respond to you, you feel rejected. Listen. Listen, not only with your ears, but listen with your, listen with your, listen with your, listen with your, to listen is to be silent. 
Listen with your what? How do you listen with your heart? You've got to take down the prejudice about the person that is talking. Don't look at a black person or a white person. If you want your heart to be engaged, don't look at a colored person. Look at a human. Look at an individual. Don't say it's a woman or a man. Remove those prejudices. Don't say it's a more anointed pastor because God will speak through your child and not necessarily the prophet. And you will miss it because you feel a child. Many of you are, came to you with a warning. You don't listen with your heart. Those who listen with the heart will inherit. What is it? Hmm? What is it? What is it? What is it? If you listen with your heart, you will inherit the earth. Blessed are the meek. To be meek is to put everybody on a standard platform. What I'm telling you is a principle. Listen to your wife. Listen to your husband. Listen to your mother. Listen with the heart. When you listen with the heart, you realize my mother has been looking after me for 17 years. She can't suddenly become Mao now and start speaking nonsense to me. She knows something I don't. Listen with the heart. God's not going to send an angel from heaven to warn you about a crazy boyfriend. It's going to be mommy or daddy or a good friend. Before you fall ill, you fail to listen. You are warned, leave the sacred, leave the sugar. But you didn't listen. You heard, but you didn't listen. Five years later, a problem occurred. You got sugar diabetes. And now you are blind or lame because you didn't listen. Now, because you don't listen with your heart, other people are affected. So before you, now I know you have all mastered the art of talking. <coughs> you are, listen, Zulu, Osa, colored, white, they are master communicators. Keiki, 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 Keiki. The first time I heard that, I said, what does this man say? Oh, he's saying Keiki here. But he said Keiki here so many times that it has mouthed, it's become like mouth of pudding. Keiki. Master communicator. But he doesn't listen. You find yourself talking at a high volume. Chonga, chonga, ah, Why are you speaking so loud? Because you want to be heard. The reason why you want to be heard is because your heart is in such a mess, it is so loud. You know a person who has earphones on? They speak loud when it's not necessary. Why? Because the earphones limit their ability to hear the normal volume of the environment. So they can't hear their own voice anymore. So anybody with earmuffs on will not hear their own voice anymore. So the reason why you're shouting is because you can't even listen to your own heart. Listen to your heart. It's telling you. You've had enough. 